Hello and welcome to another GPU review, and this time we're putting to the test the RTX 4060 Ti. I've been waiting to have the chance and get my hands on one of these 4060 Ti's from KFA2. This GPU comes with 8GB of VRAM as well as 16GB which was also recently released. Apart from pure stock performance benchmarks, we will also do an overclocking as well as an under vaulting tutorial and see how well it performs and how efficient this chip is. So let's jump right into it. First of all, let's take a look at the specs of this card. The RTX 4060 Ti is a 1080p powerhouse that can also handle most 1440p games without a problem. Now its key feature is the DLSS 3.0 support, which allows it to run even at 4K resolution with acceptable frames. The biggest issue here is the VRAM, which is limited to 8GB but is sufficient in most cases, with some exceptions of course. We already know this from the RTX 3060 Ti and the 3070, which also had 8GB of VRAM and struggle at more VRAM demanding games at higher resolutions. What makes the RTX 4060 Ti stand out though is the DLSS 3.0 support and the lower TDP of the card thanks to the new architecture, making it much more efficient. It has a modern design with a dual fan configuration and a fairly big cooler. The 102mm RGB fans have the new design allowing more airflow and much less noise during operation. You can easily control the RGB logo and fans through the KFA2 software or with the included cable that you can plug directly on the card. By downloading the app to your phone, you can also change settings and even overclock it remotely while you're in a game. The overall build quality is very good, it uses high quality components that ensure reliable and stable performance with no coil whining even at high FPS numbers. During benchmarking on stock settings, the core clock was hovering around 2700 MHz, and that is due to the limited 160 watts TDP. The card was constantly trying to maintain that number, thus leading to an unstable boost clock, which is in fact higher than the official NVIDIA numbers. Now if we adjust the power limit to max, we see immediately that the core clock becomes stable. The GPU begins to draw a bit more power, but manages to keep the clock stable and perform slightly better. During benchmarks on stock settings, the highest temperature we saw was barely hitting 65 degrees Celsius, while the fans were at 60%, being still impressively silent. The core clock of this model is from factory about 7% faster than the official specs of the 4060 Ti, so we definitely should get more performance here. But let's look at some gaming benchmarks now, and I'll catch you guys after that.
we saw, the performance of the 4060 Ti was very close to the 3070. In the last graph, we also saw that its price to performance ratio was also on point, making it the better option in my opinion. Let's move on to overclocking now and see how well it can overclock. We start with a base benchmark at 1080p and 1440p using 3 d Mark Speedway. Here we got 4,022 points and 3,164 points respectively. While in the DLSS 3.0 benchmarks at 4K resolution, we immediately see the huge difference in gains DLSS offers. We see that the FPS went from 16 frames, which is unplayable, to 70 FPS, which is much more than enough, considering the fact that this is a synthetic benchmark. Now we'll be overclocking using MSI Afterburner and running the benchmark in window mode. Before we start, we drag power limit and temperature limit to maximum. Moving to the core clock, we set plus 10 MHz and we apply. Each time we go 10 MHz higher until we hit a crash or start seeing artifacts and then go down 10 to 20 MHz. That should be our stable clock. Now going over to VRAM, we go plus 100 MHz each time and follow the same steps till we find a stable overclock. We managed to get the GPU to run stable at plus 240 MHz core clock and plus 1400 MHz memory clock. Doing a rerun, we got this time 4,487 points in 1080p and 3,519 points in 1440p, which is over 10% increase in pure performance. Testing DLSS 3 with an overclock on the other hand, we had only about 6% gains. The highest temperature we saw was 69 degrees running DLSS, and the highest power draw we saw was 180 watts. But let's try now and undervault the GPU and see how much of a difference it makes and if you should rather undervault this card. We will try to keep as close as possible to stock performance and see how that goes. Now, undervolting is a bit trickier than overclocking, and it requires more effort. We start from reading the max core voltage and GPU clock during gaming. Once we know these values, we open the curve editor and click on the square corresponding to a lower voltage increment by about 25 millivolts. We press the up arrow key till the square corresponds to your stock core clock, then we select every square point on the right and move them down or up as required, making sure that they are on the same frequency and save this profile. Now we need to run the stress test and see if it's stable enough and if we can further undervolt the GPU. If it is stable, we continue going 25 millivolts down each time. On this 4060 Ti, we achieved to go down to 975 millivolts while staying very close to our stock boost clock. The power draw dropped from 160 watts to an amazing 135 watts, which is 15% lower, proving that this new architecture is really efficient. In fact, it is only 5 watts higher than an RTX 3050, but almost 2 times faster. Let's talk about the price now and if you should consider buying this GPU. The 4060 Ti starts from about $400, which in my opinion is already overpriced for a GPU with only 8GB of VRAM by today's standards. This 4060 Ti from KFA2 on the other hand is actually quite competitively priced against other vendors on the market and makes it one of the cheapest out there. It offers very good build quality with higher clocks, sufficient cooling, and RGB lighting to pair with your setup. Now, if you are running on a 10 or 20 series NVIDIA card and planning to upgrade your GPU, then you should definitely prefer the 4060 Ti over a 3060 Ti or 3070, not only because of the performance and DLSS 3 support, but also because of the updates this GPU will have in the future due to the newer architecture. If you already have a 30 series GPU, then I would suggest maybe waiting for the release of the 50 series NVIDIA cards and only then upgrade. So that was it for today guys, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, and please do leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.